Hey guys, Thunder E here, and yes, I'm excited to show you gaming on the Samsung Odyssey G7 240Hz monitor and an insane PC build. Now, I started this build about a year ago with the 2960X Threadripper. Uh, custom liquid cooling looked pretty awesome, but I had some spillage, so I had to redo the whole thing. So I had to, of course, get some new parts. I wanna thank everyone who sent parts. But before we start off, let's get a quick word from our sponsor. So Smart Deploy makes it easy to handle IT tasks like Windows imaging, deploying apps, updating drivers, and migrating user data. You can do it all over your existing network or the cloud without ever leaving your desk. Get your exclusive free software worth over $800 at smartdeploy.com slash board. Okay, all right, so this is truly an epic moment. We've got a monitor that does 240 hertz at a 1440p. Now we've got others that do it at 1080 and that's cool, but this is a higher resolution and Samsung's G7 is a little brother to the G9. Now G9 is that ultra wide uh, and this is a 27 or 32 inch monitor with some crazy interesting specs. You've got a thousand hour curve radius, which truly helps, trust me, when you game, you're gonna see this thing. It truly does that. 240 hertz in terms of refresh rate, supports uh, G-Sync and AMD FreeSync Premium, uh, and you've got some great features. But before we get into that, let me talk about the build for a second, what powers this, because you're gonna need a lot of performance to actually get to 240 hertz. So uh, this build, uh, first of all, is crowned within all NZXT casing and parts. And I love what they've done, especially with the parts I use. So my power supply is a C850 because I'm going, of course, with a Threadripper. It's gonna, of course, take some more power. Uh, and my case is the H710i. It's a big case. This actually supports uh, uh, EATX motherboard, which I'm using in here. But I like this case because it's got three fans uh, and it's got enough room and it looks really nice when everything is done entirely. Now, the last piece, of course, is the NZXT, uh, the Kraken Z73. This is an awesome, awesome um, all-in-one cooler. And this thing is amazing because it's got a 2.3 inch LED display, which not only can you change colors, which is cool, it's the fact you can put so many GIFs on there. So I've got like, of course, Naruto uh, and Sasuke versus um, Momoshiki. I've got Superman there, I've got Batman, I've got different animated GIFs, and it looks really cool when someone's looking at that. So I love that case. Now, the heart of of course, this build is the motherboard. I'm using the ASUS ROG Zenit 2 Extreme Alpha. Yes, that's the whole word. This is an awesome board. I mean, first off, it's got an LED indicator that shows you your temperatures on the board. So you can actually see that while just looking at your case, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, this thing supports multiple PCIe slots up to four. So I can actually put in my NVMEs and I'll talk about that in there. But it's got one, one separate one that pretty much slides in like a RAM slot. I like it because it makes it easier to swap out RAM, um, upgrade, you don't have to take out your board, you can just take out that slot and do it, put it in there. Uh, and also supports up to 256 gigabytes of RAM. So yeah, if I want to expand, I can get as much RAM as I want to on this board. So cool, great cooling, also has an ESS Sabre DAC for great audio, Wi-Fi 6 built in as well, Bluetooth. So you name it, this thing is, is ready to go uh, for performance. Now, um, of course, in terms of RAM, I'm going with Corsair's uh, Vengeance Pro RGB RAM, which looks great. And not just because, of course, the RGB colors, but is what you can do with the software. And software comes into play a lot right here. So the Corsair software allows me to go in and, of course, change my RAM lighting, change my RAM timing, and also supports me changing colors on my motherboard as well. So I like that there, and it's easy for me to actually do. As well as also my NZXE software can allow me to just monitor my whole system, which also allows me to monitor the temperatures of my cooling fan, and I can do some overclocking in there, and check out my GPU temperature, and how quiet the case is, 56 decibels, yeah. That's actually pretty cool. Uh, so that's actually cool there. Now, uh, powering this, of course, is the uh, Threadripper 3960X, uh, which is a 24 core processor. This thing is an insane processor as well. Uh, one thing I liked about it, of course, is when I ran my Cinebank uh, R20 test, uh, it just blew through and it only came behind the Xenon processor, I believe it's 8168, uh, which is a 40 core, 48 core processor. So twice its core size and the distance was not that much. So 
this is awesome. This is like, I mean, this, this, this build just really just made me just giggle because of course I cannot run this on that 24, uh, 240 Hertz uh, uh, monitor from Samsung. Now rounding it up, of course, we have um, our storage. This is the Fire Kudo 520 and the Fire Kudo 520 is a PCIe 4.0 um, uh, NVMe, which supports speeds up to 5,000 uh, megabits per second pretty much as fast as the PlayStation Drive is what Sony has talked about. So it's exciting to see that in here. And I am excited to actually use this, especially for a game like Call of Duty, which takes up 200 gigabytes of storage. So they offer it in two terabytes, which is absolutely fantastic. And of course, my graphics card is the ROG Strig uh, 2080 Ti. Whew, this thing's a beast, man. Plus you can customize the fan speeds, uh, cool it down so your temperatures run cool. Now, let's go to what you're, you're waiting for, gaming. How about gaming performance and what are we getting gaming on this monitor? As I said, 240 hertz on the monitor, a thousand hour uh, curve radius, one millisecond response time. Look, I just, I'll just put it out there. I didn't think I would notice the difference between 144 and 240 hertz, but when I moved back to my 144 monitor, I was like, yeah. Yeah, I need 240. I mean, gaming performance is great. So we started off with Tomb Raider, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. We ran it at 240 hertz. Uh, when we ran to benchmarks, it said we're getting, you should get about 79 frames per second average. When I actually ran the game, I was getting about 88 uh, frames per second on average with all of the max settings. Now, of course, I moved to 144 hertz. I dropped it down. I got up to about 110 frames per second playing Tomb Raider. Again, Tomb Raider is really not the game to showcase this because because, of course, you need faster frame rates for FPS games, like, of course, Warzone. And I put on some Warzone, and as you know, uh, this game just is kind of bloated, but I really like the performance here. At 240 hertz, max settings, I was getting uh, 110 frames per second, which is actually pretty nice, uh, much higher than I expected. Uh, and again, this is 244, 240 hertz monitor. It's gonna push your system quite a bit. And when I dropped it down to 1080p, I was able to get um, up to 135 frames per second. So that's just something to take note with this. But the performance was really great. Just moving left and right, that feel, just it just felt so good. But a game that really, took advantage of this was Doom Eternal. And playing Doom Eternal, max settings, 240 hertz, I was getting about 230 to 240 uh, frames per second. You could see how smooth it was. Doom takes advantage of this well. And uh, it was great to see the monitor in action. Now, not forgetting, this monitor is also a HDR monitor, HDR 600. Uh, it's a pretty bright monitor. The RGB color spectrum uh, is also really good on this monitor. It looks nice. I also like the controls as well. Easy to navigate through. Uh, you've got two uh, display ports, one HDMI. You also have a display, a USB port at the back. Plus, the monitor has that cool lighting that just adds some more, uh, just to add some more to the whole mystique while you're gaming there. And when you play games on this, trust me, it just feels fast and fluid. It is insane monitor. Now, the monitor has two sizes. This is a 27 inch and there's a 32 inch. This is a 32 inch is what I have here. The 27 inch is priced at 699, the 32 is 799, and it's definitely worth it. I know it's a bit pricey for a monitor that size, but the 240 Hertz performance is truly amazing on this monitor. And I think a lot of people are going to like it. Whatever game you're playing, you're definitely gonna enjoy. Now, in terms of the build, I really love this build because for me, this this is my gaming and streaming build. I've talked about this for a while, and this will allow me to game and stream in the near future. So even though I do other builds, this is my main PC that I use to game, and I'll be using to stream. So I'm gonna add, of course, the Elgato capture card in there once I can get my hands on it, and it's sold out everywhere. Um, but this system is really nice. Now, it was just quite interesting to see the 2080 Ti still couldn't push 240 hertz to max in a lot of games, but I was still able to do it in Doom. I can't wait to see what Asus does with the 3080 when it comes out and see what else I can do in addition to this build. So the parts in here, you can pick and choose what fits your build quite well. But if you want a monitor, this is probably the monitor to go ahead and pick up. It is super insane, performance is great. And I mean, I I was just truly impressed with how, how solid this monitor was. So I can't wait to check out the G9 and also use the system to run on there. So if you guys have any questions or any comments, let us know. Uh, definitely check out our sponsor, 
Also, if you want to pick up the monitor or any of the parts, you find the links down below. I also have a PC part picker for you guys so you can see the whole build all the way through. This is Thunder E saying thank you very much and always enjoy your entertainment.